All right, let's do some examples where we approximate some, uh, some definite integrals. We're going to do that by interpreting them as area and approximating the area. So this first one says approximate uh, integral of approximate the integral of x squared dx from 0 to 2 using left endpoints and four rectangles. I'm going to draw this uh, manually. So let's see, we've got this is 2 and 1. And up here, we, we only need this side of the parabola because we're going from 0 to 2. So what we're doing is we're trying to find this area inside of here using four rectangles and left endpoints. All right, so let's draw in the rectangles. Let's see, we're going to have these are places. And for the left endpoints, that means for the, this first rectangle is going to go from here to here. The next one's going to be here and here and here. So our approximation is going to be these four rectangle areas. It's not going to be a very good approximation because it's obviously leaving out a good bit of the area underneath the curve. But let's, uh, let's calculate. All right. So let's see, what are the widths? Or actually, let's don't do that yet. Let's look at the let's look at the sums here. Sum of f of x sub i delta x. Now our delta x here is the width, and that is going to be one half for all of these, because that's the width of each rectangle. Now the f of x i, those are the heights. So Let's see, the height of this first rectangle is obviously 0. The height of the next rectangle here is, um, tell you what, let me write this out. So for each of these, what we're doing is we're plugging in the left endpoint. So here we plug in 0, then we plug in 1 half, and then 1, and then 3 halves. So that's going to give us the area. Now notice uh, this 1 half, I can factor it out since it's multiplied on all of them. And what we were left with is 0 plus 1 fourth plus 1 plus 3 half squared is 9 fourths. So if we add that up, we've got 9 fourths, 10 fourths, 14 fourths. So that winds up being 7 over 2. Or no, 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 7 over 4. And that is our approximation. Now, let's use the online calculator to check this. All right, we're looking at uh, y equals x squared. We're going from 0 to 4, or no, I'm sorry, 0 to 2 with four rectangles. If I draw those rectangles in, it gives me those. And sure enough, it gives me 1.75 for the approximation. So that uh, checks that this is correct. We, we got the correct approximation. To get a better approximation, there are different things we could do. Notice this is an undercount. If I switch to the right, it's going to count extra area and gives us something big. If I switch to using the midpoints, it gives us something that's a better approximation. But if I leave it on left end point and I use a lot more rectangles, we get a better approximation. And it looks like if I'm using, let's see, 40,000 rectangles, it looks like two and two-thirds is probably the exact area. All right, let's go back to uh, the next example. The next example says use the online calculator to approximate sine x dx using left endpoints in 100 rectangles. So let's do that. So if I put in sine x, we get this. And they said to go from 0 to pi. So what they're talking about here is 
0 to pi. On this thing, you can just type in pi, and it'll interpret it. So um, that's what we want. We want 100 rectangles. So if we do that, we get this. And notice the um, we get for our estimate as 1.99983. Etc. So, what do you think the actual answer there would be? Well, it looks like it's, uh, I mean, it's close to two, but let's see if by using more rectangles, if it gets closer to two. If I put in a thousand rectangles, yeah, we get more nines there. Um, let's jump up to a hundred thousand rectangles and see if we get more nines. Oh, yeah. And finally, a million rectangles. If I put in a million rectangles, it, it gives me two. It's still giving an approximation. It's just uh, the approximation is... Uh, it turns out the actual answer is two. And this is given an approximation that's close enough that it, through round off error it gives us exactly two. All right. So what we've done on these two was approximated some areas and use those to evaluate some intervals for those two examples. Uh, what we're going to do on the next video is look at using geometry to, um, to evaluate uh, intervals. And so we'll look at that in the next video.